Hi there. Uh, welcome back to uh, week two in the kitchen. Uh, Moira and the crows are still crowing outside, so we have to take it inside again. Um, this week we are going to look, or we're going to focus more on the kind of like the individual and the player aspect of our uh, preseason and planning and, and, and the team building. So we're going to look at positional profiles, we're going to look at player relationships, we're going to look at uh, position specific criteria, you know, just the kind of ins and outs of, of how you go about building a roster and understanding your strengths and weaknesses and, and you know, what you have to work with and what you don't have to work with. And then ideally you get the players on the same page as well and then we're all off to the races together. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we will start with this. So this is, if you watched uh, my previous series, is the unit player profiles. Um, and it's the basis of everything, really. So it's the uh, what you split your, your tight five, your loosies, your halfbacks, the centers, and then the back three into. Now, these are their jobs. It's win possession, retain, regain, manage, create, and then finish with possession. Um, and what you want to do then is to prioritize like what is their main role so for the tight five it's the set piece it's your scrum it's your line out it's the it's the uh, kickoffs it's more they have more of a tackle and a defense versus the halfbacks is you know distribution game management kicking so it's a little bit more detailed than what i discussed in the the previous series but when you know we, we approach it like this it's very simple and this is actually it's just a it's a, it's a google doc and this kind of gets your mindset correct and, and my, your mindset focused on where you want to be and what's actually required of the team. So as you can see, it's a, it's fairly simple. Um, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to progress on to just looking at one of those um, positional roles. So we're going to look at the midfield or the centers and we're going to look at how you can distinguish between the positions and then what's needed. So if we're looking here, this is just a, a center overview uh, for the midfield. Um, what you want to do is you want to compare about your 12 and your 13 as a unit you know what do you want out of that unit and depending on what tactics you're playing these are going to be slightly different so i have here just distribution skills communication the tackle and then their role in defensive structures for instance that's just both technical and tactical and it's just about you know writing down all of the things that you need to do so go through what's actually required so let's look at the technical of the ball carrier so you wanted two hands because you want that we wanted the hands to be able to get free to make a pass we wanted to find space with our unders and overs running lines the change of pace the, the timing and the decision of the pass and then stay involved after the pass we had a big focus on getting two touches um and this is kind of like you know just you, you write out what you want and it's going to take a lot of time to, to do all the positions at least once, but then you'll have have them as a skeleton or a framework in the future going forward. And then when you when you have it all done, you have it mapped out, then we can actually give this to the players or and then see what they feel about it. Like, do they have do they want to take things away? Do they think there's things that could be added? And then you give them ownership, therefore, of their role and the midfield itself. And when you do that, then they become a lot more invested. So when we have the positional pairings or roles uh, mapped out, then the next thing what we want to do is we actually want to go into just the, the differences. And this is uh, particularly important uh, with your, your back row and your midfield because, for instance, six, seven and eight are do not have the same requirements. They do not have the same attributes or skills, and they're generally not the same player. Um, same for the midfield, you know, we all, all can tell a difference between a 12 and a 13 and it's about having team functionality and if we have two players of the same mould, we might not have that fluidity, which is what we're looking for. So we'll just look at uh, something here, which is another thing I like to do. So yeah, so this is the positional differences and I have these just for the both the loose forwards and the midfield. Um, I'm going to just talk about the six, seven and eight and the, you know, your ideal partnership. So I have I have number eight typed up already. Ideally in a game, in a high level game, you want your number eight getting 24 touches of the ball per game. So that doesn't sound like much, but when you think about it, the ball is generally only in play for like 32 to 36 minutes and you're going to probably be defending from 60 to 40 percent of that time. So your number eight is going to have to aim for uh, like one and a half to two touches a minute at some points. So what we want to do here is like I'm going to just use number eight as a link up player. 
so their big focus will be on decision making, is involvement in attack with the ball. So they kind of want to they will they will drop back to support the backs on kicking situations. They will link up from do defense to attack in turnovers. They will generally be more in a wider channel, you know. Um, your seven. And again, these are I, I, the reason I left these blank was so for to give you guys ideas and and perhaps you have different uh, views, which is fine. Um, I like my seven to be more of a you know support. Uh, defensive player so involved much more in the breakdown it's a possible line out jumper um, it's linking up that defense and in, in scrums and set pieces from forwards to backs and it's generally you know you're hitting 20 20 to 30 plus rocks a game and you're making an awful lot of tackles versus six is like the you know you're attacking threat it's it's a definitely a line out jumper it's a big ball carrier um, you kind of can lessen their requirements on the amount of breakdowns that they should be at you know ideally the number seven does their job and then the six is able to really go and express themselves and attack and that's you know that's just how that's just how a random three team would work together but i mean the position the numbers on the back do not dictate what actually has to happen you know if we looked at australia back in the world cup in 2015 they had hooper and pocock and, and they wanted to play with two sevens because they wanted to dominate the breakdowns so whatever Whatever kind of talent that you have or however you want to play, this is up for you to, to decide. So again, it's a simple thing. It's just you look at the mental, the physical, and the effect on the game and what you want each of them to do. And when you do that, then it's quite easy because everyone should know their role. So that is your, your team and your unit profiles and the, the differences between the different categories. And So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at the uh, individual player plans. And I can show you uh, just one or two of them. There's no point um, going through all of them. But the idea is for you to take these ideas and to go create yourself. So I'm going to just look at two. And I'm going to just look at two different examples of how you can do an individual player uh, assessment. This first one here is the you know number ten or first five, um, and it's started with the idea of what is the key role, and the t key role is to be the tactical leader and game controller, and then the key thought, what should they be thinking? It's explosive strike moves. I always want them striking, um, and then we split that down into the on-field role, the tactical role, and then the kicking. So the on-field role is to communicate options and tactics, the animation and off the ball, because it's such a, an important part of being a number 10, because they draw so much attention. We want to look at defensive line speed and then support play. I've mentioned this two touches before. Um, and then the tactical role, you know, it's controlling the game, it's executing the game plan, it's play calling, spatial awareness. It sets the line of depth for attack and defense. And then we looked at both the kicking, you know, what should the number 10 be able to do kicking wise? Um, and with some minimum standards, well, well, sorry, ideal standards that you want to aim for. And then from that, we take it down to the, the, the decision making process. Scan, listen, react and execute. It's quite simple, but this is what they have to do. And you can take this as a model, okay, you can apply it to other positions. So this is just the number 10, for example. You can put the, you know, the 9, the 5, whatever you want in. The other way to do it is to look at at we just break down the position into five key areas and go from there this is the number nine it's passing kicking running slash attack tackle slash defense and game management and again just just come up with with the key points for each of these areas and as you're so this is going to help as i talked about last week when you're looking at your te your team profile or your player profile if you have these in the back of your mind, you're able to identify the characteristics or the attributes that your players have that might fit a position better than another position. Um, because I find here in the US, for instance, we have, there's, there's very little technical coaching going on. So that's a huge opportunity to be able to develop players into positions which they're more suited for than what they may previously have been playing. So these are all kind of top-down uh, analysis or uh, previews. Um, it's it's the coaches having a better understanding of the team themselves. Um, what I want to look at now is actual how can you help the players get better, and how can you use what they know to help build 
build a game plan. So we're going to look at player relationships, and it just it just this just came out of like just just classic conflict management. So what you want to do is you want to ask a player. Let's say you play, and the example we're going to use is the number twelve and number thirteen. So you can see here the key relationship, obviously, as a thirteen is your number twelve. The second one will be the wings. Then he said that the number seven and the fullback would be other key relationship. When they have put down these key relationships and given it thought, the first thing you want to do is offer what can I do to help those positions because then it becomes much more of like an outward and, and a giving uh, mindset when they are filling this in as opposed to more of a self-centered one saying this is what I need. So the number 13 says he needs the number 12 to scan field on attack and defense, feed him information, respond to his actions, change the line or role, be a run kick pass option and to relieve some pressure. And then after that you ask them what can you do to help and like he said, it's respond to your calls, stay in the system on defense, run precise lines and attack, create space, understand the different types of pass, and work well with the 7 and 10. So this is very simple. You you, you create up the um, just a blank Google Doc and then send it out to your team and have them fill it out. Um, and then we will look at the number 12, who did it a little less detailed, but he's like we just look at his 13 so respond to his calls and that kind of that relates back to here where it's the the other player said the exact same thing you know communicate in defense position appropriately uh, create space you know communicate options early read of threats and predict action required um, again I'd just like to send this out and you know get the players to do it and it helps them to start developing um, relationships with their teammates at about the different positions because you know we don't really have very much time with our athletes so being able to have them on the same page without actually getting them on the pitch is quite difficult and this is a very simple method uh, to do and to help out this was a, an easy way to collect all the information just a Google form uh, it's relationships it's in German sorry so I found it quite easy to get the info out of the players rather than actually having to open up like a Google uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, pick their position, the relationship number one, the relationship number two. Um, what can the player do to get to help you? Blah 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 blah. And it was just a Google form, so it's you can send it out through WhatsApp or Discord or it's on their phones, and then they can just update it as as needed, and then the results are auto populated into a spreadsheet. And when the team has all the forms completed and sent in, then you can actually start to um, look at which positions say what things. And from that, you then you get to you develop your uh, relationship guidelines saying, hey, this is the requirement. If anyone plays 12 or, or 13, that the 12 has to talk to the 13 because they both agreed that it is important. Um, so you find well, some find some commonalities and you, you set them as the the benchmarks, and it's quite easy there, therefore going forward into the future where we you know if, like when you ask hey why did why did our attack break down and then the thirteen says he didn't talk to me and then you don't get into this kind of like back and forth um, well no but this and that and this no so it's like this is what we agreed upon this is what you agreed upon this needs to happen. So it's, it's quite an easy way. It's quite informal at the start, but depending on how you enforce it, it can become the backbone of your relationship building between the positions and the different roles. So this is uh, one thing I just wanted to show you. I was quite lucky enough to get to work on this uh, several years ago, and then I updated it recently uh, for a different organization. But it's just your individual development plan for players. Um, and the reason I'm just showing to you in PDF before we click through it is just so you can get a, a more overall view. So this would be the main page, and then you'd have your, your technical, tactical, physical, nutritional, mental, and holistic aspects. And you just, you're just you asking the players to rank themselves and you know where they're at, and come more of kind of like a self-reflective activity. And then if you are lucky enough to, to have players who have bought in and they're in the development phase, you uh, have a second page here, which is your weekly preparation. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to measure their, their happiness, their anxiety, and their energy levels, for instance. Um, this is... The, so you have the players would have some weekly goals and then you want the you know their clarity their training performance and then some notes from the coach you know so the players would score their goals at the end of the week to see how they did and then the coach would score it as well 
So it's a quick review, you know, what they thought went well, what the coach thought went well, what needs work, and then what's what are they going to focus on the following week. And then the bit on the right is it's not doesn't have to be every week. You know, if you have if you are fortunate enough to work with a strength and conditioning trainer, a little note can go in here. If you know you have your physical therapist or you have your 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 medical um partnerships then little notes can go in there same if you have the mental skills coaches and and it's just a just an easy way and the reason i did it on pdf is because i wanted to show here so you see the numbers and then i have just brief descriptions of of every single um, thing that's numbered and the reason we do that is because when i go here on the actual thing because the way google drive works is so run catch pass there's the early descriptor. So, the, so these are the, the set standards of what the team uh, knows and has agreed on. So there's no like um, differences. Oh, well, I can throw a 30 meter pass if all of our passes and what how we rank our passes are, you know, short five to 10 meter passes. Um, so we get a closer look at it there. Um, so it's just a just a you don't have to copy this or just a, you can make it more of a, a simpler version. Um, and it just I find it quite helpful to, to put people on the right course at the start of the season. Uh, obviously, when you're in a full time environment, you can do the weekly reviews. If it's not, you can make it monthly almost. Um, if you know you are working at the like the amateur club level or you're not at a varsity program at the college side. So then you can make that more monthly or even or even longer. And obviously, you don't have to make it look like an American flag, but uh, I find it adds a little bit of pizzazz. So the the depth that you want to go to means I mean I could probably go on for another hour about different options and and uh, things that are possible. Um, we want to just to just do a quick recap. So you know you start off with your uh, unit positional roles. So the tight five, the loose forwards. You know inside backs, outside backs, etc. Um, and then if you look at the the characteristics or the attributes required for those roles, then that leads you or led us on to the difference in positional. Uh, roles, so your midfield, your loose forwards, and just kind of having a better idea of how your team actually functions on attack and defense. You know what's needed, what what's required of one role versus the other. So we're not just playing with two midfielders. You know how we want them to complement each other. From that, then we led into the uh, more specific, the individual player positional roles, and then relationships. So the players understand, you know, what's required, and, and they understand kind of where we're going, and um, you know what direction we are pointing at. And then we finished with the development plans. Um, next week is going to be really exciting. So I know on Monday we're hosting the uh, first ever coaches roundtable chat. Well. Um, so we have some uh, top quality coaches that are going to be on on there discussing the transition uh, aspects of the game and COVID and 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 coaching uh, through COVID uh, protocols. Um, you really should should check that out. That's going to be Monday at six p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, um, and we'll have coaches from the collegiate game, from the women's game, from MLR, and then the club side and. It's just going to be, a, I think it's going to be a wonderful experience. Will definitely be worth uh, checking out. So that'll be Monday at six and it's going out live. So get your questions prepped. And as you ask the questions, we will try and get to them. Um, so until then.